When you become a police officer, sometimes you have to go above and beyond the call of duty. But Officer Mike Fusco never imagined how far he might have to go to try and save a life until the morning of December 14th, 1989. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you've been waiting for. Come here. There was nothing unusual about the morning. Kevin was watching cartoons. I was upstairs putting my makeup on and uh, getting ready for work. Willie was downstairs playing. That was his claim to fame. He just loved to play ball. Kevin is an only child, and the dog was a great companion to my son, Kevin. Oh, my mother's carrying an elephant. I wasn't paying attention. I was watching cartoons. Really? And the next thing I turned around, and he was making these funny noises. The ball. I took one look at Willie and I could actually see the ball lodged in his throat. I tried with my hand to work the ball out myself. Uh, that didn't work at all. I, I panicked. I immediately called the vet. The receptionist could only tell me to bring the dog in. Okay, fine. It fine. frightened me. It was, I was afraid he was going to be dead when I went to school. I did get Kevin down to a neighbor's house. I did not want Kevin to witness this. Hello? I called my sister Diane and I asked her for help. Susan's sister Diane brought her 10-year-old son Michael to help take Willie to the vet. Willie was choking but able to breathe. I tried to remove the ball also, but I was unsuccessful. His tooth came down and he wouldn't allow it. The situation really didn't get bad until we tried to put him in the car. When we tried to put him in the vehicle, he panicked. And that's when it became bad. Willie had started vomiting. My worst fear came true, and I knew at that point that I probably was going to lose him. The dog collapsed. There was no passageway. I mean, when he started vomiting, that all blocked. My son was sitting right next to the dog, so he just literally watched the dog fall over and become limp. When I looked back, I saw that Willie was dead. I was really scared. I never seen anything die right before me. We only had minutes. We're never going to make it to the vet. And the police station was right there. If anybody can help us, they can help us. Because there was nothing we could do at that point. I knew right then and there that Mike Fosco was in the building, and he's one of our canine officers. Mike had been one of the first canine officers in the state to be taught how to do CPR on dogs. I never thought I'd be doing it on somebody else's dog. We checked for a heartbeat. Nope. There's no heartbeat. He wasn't getting any air into him. I could see the ball lodge way down his throat. So I reached down, pulled the ball out, clamped his mouth together, and started breathing in through his nose. For every couple of breaths, I started doing some chest compressions. Move, move. Come on, come on, buddy. Come on. I don't have any. Nothing at all, Mike, nothing. I'm just thinking to myself, there's just no way this is going to work. This dog's dead. But I just got to keep doing it. It's just before Christmas time. It's kind of sag, especially for the kid. Come on, buddy, breathe. I really, I really loved the dog very much. And we were going to lose part of the family, which is a hard thing to deal with. Let me know he gets hanging. I guess a minute and a half, two minutes went by. And uh, I thought to myself a couple of times whether or not I should stop. John and Mike, they were rooting for this dog to come back to life, and it keeps you going. Is, you know, how far can I carry this? Let's go, out of the way, out of the way. Trying. Come on, come on, buddy. I've always loved dogs. I felt that I had to, I had to keep going. I had to keep going, and, and you know, I gotta bring this dog back.
Wait a minute. I, All of a sudden. I got a heartbeat, but it's sporadic. I, Getting some, yeah, really? I got it. Really? Right. You sure? Okay. Okay, we got a heartbeat. Okay, he's starting to breathe. Yep. He's starting to breathe. He's opening his mouth. He's got his eyes open. He's breathing. He's breathing. Good boy. Good boy. He came back, like, all of a sudden. He just sparked right up. I mean, he opened up his eyes and just took this big gasp of air and uh, started breathing. I couldn't believe it. He could tell he was still dazed. So we, we were ready to put him into the back of the squad car. We were throwing a blanket on him, and he just wanted to start running around. <laughs> I don't think anyone was more amazed than me. Just never thought it would happen. Thank you. You're welcome. They rushed Willie to the vet, where he was examined and found to be suffering no ill effects from his accident. Go, Willie and his family have learned their lesson. Now he is only allowed to play with tennis balls, which are too large for him to swallow. We've become very good friends with Mike. He stops by on a regular basis to see us and the dog. After this whole incident, first thing he did was just jump up on top of me and start looking at my face. And, you know, it was a good feeling. It's kind of like he knew what happened. He did a great job. If it wasn't for Mike, I wouldn't have my dog. I think I'll have this over my head <laughs> for my whole career here. I get uh, dog bones, ribbons on them, and <laughs> dog bone baskets, and, <laughs> you know, dog bones on my car. It is funny when I think about it now. I ran out there and started breathing into his muzzle. I mean, a lot of people are real amazed that a cop would even do something like that. So I guess it gives us a good name anyways, you know? Hey. <laughs> Whether it's my dog or somebody else, if nobody wants to lose one. Because they're that close to us and they're part of the family.